I've done a video about this and shared it uh, a couple of years ago, but I haven't on this channel. And so I just thought as we walked by, I just wanted to film. I've never seen it with the lights on. Again, I, I don't usually walk out here when the, when the lights are on, <laughs> either this early. See, 1922 wow. is when this first opened. I think I've seen Melvin's discussed before. Yeah, you probably have. Yeah, there's lots of videos about it. And uh, you might even have saw my video. <laughs> very, very, very <laughs> well, see, now this would be much more manageable than going all the way up to the tram. Yeah, I, saw, yeah. You know, I, t I took off and, and I didn't start until... It was 11.30, almost noon. Are you so serious? Was, uh, you walked up here at noon? So it was 101 or 102 oh, yeah. when I started. And so I just did some time. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and turn. You want to talk about it? <laughs> turn, turn back. Uh, so how, how long were we up there? Five, ten minutes? No, no. That was uh, an hour. Uh, you walked for I, an hour at noon? I, yep. Oh, my goodness. So, You're lucky you survived. <laughs> oh, I have that I'm, I'm very tuned in. You to, brought uh, lots of water with you? Yep. I had and a, your dog? I, I have a camel. No, dog, yeah. not, dog's not on this trip. I don't bring him on the oh. airplane. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Well, in fact, it says no dogs allowed on trails. Now, that's interesting because almost every year, at least one or two people die on these trails here. Uh -huh. Doing like what you just did, walking at oh, noon yeah. in the middle of summer. So, uh, But they almost always you hear the story that their dog stayed with them until they were rescued, until they were found. So apparently a lot of people don't follow the rules and they take their dogs and, uh, let's, what does this say? And then the dogs are getting rescued also. Yeah. There's the uh, yeah. temperature thing. So one of my buddies is on the mountain rescue for Telluride and we, we actually had a conversation because I jokingly was talking about, and I joke that I, I tell my dog, Remy, Remy is his name. If I pass away, you can you can eat me on the trail. It's, it's okay. <laughs> you give him permission. <laughs> yep. And uh, so he he we talked about it, and he said, "Yep, it's a it's a thing. Uh, most dogs do not eat their owners, even if they've been they're still with their owner. Yeah, for I wouldn't think they would eat them. Yeah. Two. Later, they they don't, but." they have come across i think he i think he said he's come across two bodies that they have wow so, so see i always thought the dog protected them from being eaten by coyotes or wolves or whatever absolutely you know, that's, that, but that, that i guess seems... if the dog was starving and maybe if the dog didn't like you that much maybe they would eat you yeah i would i would assume <laughs> most uh, dogs i would think probably wouldn't eat they'd probably die before they would eat their owner you don't were, you think if you had already been passed away for a week you know, the dog's hungry. And yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe they, yeah, maybe they would be smart enough to do that. All right, so what does this say? Know your ability. Skyline Trail is a rigorous 10-mile hike that climbs to over 8,000 feet. Now, that must be if you go all the way up to the tram, Correct. right? Yep. So it may take 5 to 12 hours to complete. Beginners should not attempt this hike. Wow. All right, so you can just pause this if you want to read this, the entire sign and i definitely would read this if you're planning to come and hike in these hills i mean one of the most one of the things people come here the most to do is to hike in these trails here in palm springs did okay. you know how famous these are and these trails are just so famous with hikers i have a an, a trail app called all trails and it's so it's they talk a lot about palm springs. I, hike, I hike wherever i yeah. have my overnights for yeah. for work and uh so yes that was you know we kept coming here through covid um era and that kind of worked out well where there was no longer the you know going to do the uh village fest street oh yeah you could go hiking any, out by yourself and it doesn't matter exactly. you don't need to be around. i think it's better not to be around people so yep yeah <laughs> it worked out well yeah yeah all right so we're gonna walk around this neighborhood here it's called historic tennis club i don't know i didn't realize you know the tennis club is like right behind downtown. But then again, this is over on Ramon, so it's a little bit further over. But I guess this is part of the tennis club as well. Now, there wasn't much here. I mean, a lot of these homes are new. So we're just gonna walk zigzag up and down these streets and just walk and see what we see. Hi guys, Steve here in Palm Springs, and I'm with Alan, a subscriber. Hello, hello. <laughs> and he's been leaving comments forever, which is fun. And he's also a walker like I am. And it's so funny because we just ran an into each other here. Now, Alan, you bought uh, a condo here, was it about a year ago? 
Yes. They have a place here and he just happened to be in town and he's out walking in the morning. He likes to do early morning walks like I do and we just happen to run into each other so it's really fun to uh, to meet you. Absolutely. Yeah, like I always say to all of you, if you happen to see me out and about walking, join me for a walk like Alan is doing. And so we're walking in a neighborhood where I haven't been in probably 10, 20 years. In fact, a lot of this neighborhood wasn't even here. It's, a lot of it is new construction. It's called the Historic Tennis Club, but I think there's probably only a few streets that are actually old historic homes. Oh, wow. Most of them are new. So we're going to zigzag up and down these streets. Not too many streets here. It's uh, Ramon Road, which is one of the main roads here in Palm Springs. It's all the way at the end of Ramon. In fact, you can see where it says end. <laughs> so this is where Ramon Road ends. And it's right here at North Lake and Trailhead. And as you can see, the sun is just coming up. It's, what time do you think it is? About yeah, six o'clock? Yeah, so the sun is just coming up. And so if everything looks dark, that's why. And Alan was just saying he walked on this trail yesterday. Was it yesterday? Uh, two days ago when we got back, when we got into town for this, this trip. Yeah, so he walked on this trail. It goes from right behind the museum over this direction. So this is south of the museum. And this is a shorter, did it say how many miles this is from the museum? Three to four miles or three, three miles or something. This direction. Did you come this way? You didn't come this way though. Yeah, the way the way the hike goes is from the museum. It's the, also the same trail that you would take to go to if you were doing the cloud, the, the tram. cactus to cloud. All the way up to the tram. Hike. You know, I just, I think I heard this morning, I was looking at the news, uh, I think it's closed. I think they closed it because of, of the high temps and the humidity. Oh, I, I would expect that. Yeah, it yeah. Should, it's, now that it's starting to cool off, the highs right now are back to normal. Yeah. Uh, 108 or... Yeah, only 108. Do, <laughs> we're having a cold snap here. <laughs> it, was, it was 118 that yeah, day. So yeah, yeah, oh wow. A, it, was a, it was noticeable. Yeah, yeah, gosh. So there's a guy you can see over there hiking up there, but apparently uh, it was closed. I don't know, maybe it's open again. But so this is from the museum to here is probably a mile, I would guess. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then if you go the other direction up to the tram, did it say up here was like eight miles? So the, the hike up to the... Did it even say? You, oh, 10 miles. Yeah, it's a 10 mile hike. If you were doing the full uh, cactus to cloud, yeah. which is basically from the valley floor up to the San Jacinto yeah. peak, it's 22 miles because round trip because most people will hike up to the top of San Jacinto Peak 10,800 feet or something yeah. like that and then they hike back down to the tram and take the tram oh. down oh, that's, okay. that's 22 miles including the tram ride uh, or just the up walk to, up to just the walk part wow so if you were to continue walking it's it's 30 something miles to go up and back if you did the complete I didn't realize it was that uh, that long and that's why that's why mo most people ride the tram ride the tram yeah so in the in the scheme of things depending on what time of year you're doing it like right now if you were to do that hike most people would start hiking at 2 or 3 a.m yeah so that they can get the three degrees cooling <laughs> yeah. off per thousand feet of yeah. elevation yeah. and at uh, 10,000 feet of climbing um, you know it's 30 you know 30 degrees cooler up there I still would not want to be hiking in, in even if it's a little bit cooler, I mean it's still hot, and yeah. and we were just saying it's really humid this morning. I mean it's very yeah, definitely. Humid. I, like, I'm, yeah, we're both really sweating. Was, and, uh, the sun wasn't even up, and I'm already sweating. I was kind of curious. Well, on the drive over here, my temperature said 90 degrees. So I don't know if it was just because it was in the garage. I think the garage gets a little bit hotter, but oh. it's got to be at least 89, 90 degrees. And uh, yeah, it's uh, well. Some people they'll go all the way up to the tram, and then from there they can hike all the way over. Morning. Good morning. <laughs> They'll go all the way to um, Idlewild. Have you been to Idlewild? Yes, yes. That's nice, isn't it? We we were up there uh, two, uh, day. We were in Idlewild two days. Ago. Oh yeah. Wow. Oh yeah, yeah. You definitely should visit Idlewild if you've never been there. I've... Well, let's let's start up the street here. Alan was just saying that because of the. Um, humidity which we're having right now and you know it's it's fairly typical in late july and the first couple of weeks of august to be kind of humid here you know we we're famous for our dry heat but not you know we do get the monsoons and we had a big storm i mean we, we were just saying that uh, yesterday it just poured down rain for about maybe 15 20 minutes mm -hmm. <laughs> the sun was out and shining it was like 105 degrees or something this was in the morning and it was 
pouring down rain. And uh, that was interesting. But yeah, we do get the summer monsoons. But so we were just talking about the hike up to the tram and it reminded me, reminded me of a story. I don't think I've shared this on this channel. I mean, maybe I have, I don't know. But I know most of you don't watch all my videos anyway. So I'll repeat the story for those of you who haven't heard it. So. And I don't know, tell me if you've heard this, if you remember me talking about this on the channel. But back in the 1960s, after the tram just first opened in 1963, my cousins, Jim and Jimmy, they uh, hiked up to, no, no, they took the tram up and then they decided, I mean, they were probably like 16, 17 years old. They were just oh, wow. teenagers. And they decided to hike down the tram. Well, there was no trail. This trail did not exist. Oh, this is just down the tram cable? Just, just, no, yeah, just down the side of the mountain. Yep. And with no trail or anything, I guess they figured there must be some kind of a trail, some way to get down. And they made it, I don't know, maybe halfway down. <laughs> and they got stuck on a cliff. There was no way to get back up. There was no way to get down. There was no way to get off of the side of the cliff. They were on the side of the mountain. Fortunately, the tram, was going up and down and they were screaming and yelling and waving and the, the people on the tram car could see them. And so when they, they oh, called wow. the police and the, the rescue department and everybody and they had to have a helicopter come <laughs> and extract them from the side of the mountain there. And wow. so and it was it was like on the front page of the Desert Sun newspaper back then. It's funny, I've looked for that newspaper article, but I can't find it. I don't know if they didn't keep records from back then or what, but uh, yeah, so now you can actually just take a trail up there, but oh. <laughs> in 1963 there was no trail, and they, I guess they were trailblazers, you know, but... In the wrong direction. But they went the wrong direction, yeah, yeah. So I, I guess it's a good thing that they actually were where the, peep, the tram cars could see them and hear them yelling for help, because if they had been stuck on a cliff somewhere else, they might still be there, you know. Yeah. They, they were lucky that they were... Uh, were rescued and yeah that was i'm sure they never forgot that uh, that hike but yeah it's very dangerous hiking here in uh, in the summer probably we shouldn't even be hiking or walking today like this with this humidity look how much i'm sweating yeah i, I know. played uh, when i did the uh that north what i'll call the skyline slash north hiking trail yeah. the, our hike the other day i had two liters on my camel back and then i had two one liter uh, analogy in bottles. Well, that's good. Just yeah. For what was going to be an hour walk, but it also had that that portion of the hike was 1,500 feet of climbing. So yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, like I say, every year at least uh, one or two or three people get rescued or they actually die hiking in these hills here. But look how beautiful. I mean, you can see why people are tempted to go hiking up here in these these mountains. So. Yeah, this house here looks like a mid-century home, mid-century yeah, modern home, probably like the 1960s, 70s. Yeah, so we made it one street so far. Okay, let's, it looks like, okay, this is just the back entrance to this new development. So, all right, so we'll hike back, we'll go back down this way, and then we'll zigzag. I think all of these are dead-end streets, so we can look mm -hmm. at one side and then the other. Okay. If you make 50, now you're, you're you're forecasted to live past average age. Oh, you are. So, yes. so since I made it to 70, is there a good chance I'll make it to, to 80? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's exactly it. It's because we've made it through. You've made it. I'm, I'm still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're still a youngster. <laughs> I, I, I haven't passed the uh, what I call the Darwin Award activities of uh, great ideas that you know. Let's go hiking at noon. Yeah. Or, you know, the, I mean, I still do some stupid things like that, but a lot fewer than I used to. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess maybe I never did as many as as other people. Absolutely. Since yeah. I made it to seventy, you know. But yeah, you know my. Um, relatives everybody in my family no one my mom lived to 80 almost was she 86 or almost 86 oh, like wow. i think she was just a week before 86 and she died she's the she's lived the longest in ever of everybody in our family so i know there's my statistically my chances of living to 85 are probably very small oh, yep, you know yeah, just Family because history. genetics. And that's, uh, that's, yeah. that's a huge i mean that's a big one i think that's probably the most important one it sure seems like it
incredible neighborhood. Yeah, isn't it pretty? I like this neighborhood too, because they're all one story places. Pretty nice neighborhood of modern homes, huh? This is a wonderful place. Wow. Yeah. And so I think really these have only been here for maybe 10, 15 years. They, they look, they all look kind of relative. Pretty new, yeah. I think it was just maybe that last street or two that had some of the older, older homes. So Alan was just asking how much these houses go for in this neighborhood. And, and you know, be honest, I never even look before my walks to see how, how much the homes go for. But I'm guessing that these have to go for at least two, three, four, five million dollars. These are brand new, very large homes. Well, not brand new, but they've been here about 10, 15 years, I think. And I think we're gonna have to go look on Zillow or you guys can go look on Zillow for those of you who are curious. Like every, everyone always asks me, you know, how much the houses uh, sell for in the neighborhoods that I walk in. And I, I never really know because I usually don't look ahead of time. And, uh, but these, I, I would be very surprised if these weren't at least three, four, five, five million dollars. Are you looking on your uh, Zillow now? Uh, okay, so yeah, we've got the, uh, the names of the streets here. So Alan is going to actually do a little uh, research here while we're walking. So this one's called Alt Air Court. Is that a dove just sitting there enjoying wow, so the sunrise? I think so. First of all, there is, there is nothing for sale in this neighborhood. Yeah, I haven't seen a single sign it of anything looks like for sale. It's a, uh, a keeper. <laughs> yeah, I think once you buy one of these, you probably just keep it forever. <laughs> Five hundred thousand dollar lot. So the lots when they were available, well, there might still be some lots down at the bottom of the hill. Yep. But it, so. so they don't even show what some of these sold for in the past. No, I'd have to zoom. Oh, so I zoomed in, and they are all like the previous prices yeah. are two point five to three. Point eight. Okay, so two, three, four. Yeah, and this is when they originally sold maybe 10, 15 years ago? Correct. Yeah, okay, so they could then be close to maybe 10 million now because everything has just doubled in the last uh, few years. We, we paid that. Yeah, when, when yeah, we, yeah. So, okay, so these are probably close to 10 million in at least in that range. And that doesn't, you know, surprise me because these are huge homes, beautiful new homes. This is Ramon Road. Like downtown Palm Springs is just a block from here. So really close, or a couple blocks. So excellent uh, neighborhood, one of the best neighborhoods, beautiful mountain views. So yeah, not a surprise that these would be around 10 million. <laughs> the sun's yeah, the light is just really highlight. pretty. Makes it, makes it perf makes yeah, a perfect shot. And look at this one across the street. Yeah, these were all, I think, built by the same developer. You know, a lot of times I'll walk in neighborhoods and I'll say these are, they sell the lots and you just build your own. But these, I think, were all built by the same developer. They look very similar. They're very similar. I mean, there's a lot of variety, but they do have a similar feel. Now, this development behind was built at least 20, maybe even 25 years ago. I remember when it was being built. It was new. Okay. When we moved down here 20 years ago, and it was new then. They were just still finishing it up. Wow. And that's also another really beautiful neighborhood, but those are not modern style. That's more of the Mediterranean Spanish style. So usually have, you know, one of those two styles here in Palm Springs. So here's the, uh, the other side of the street, the other side of Ramon. And these, this is the older, more historic place. This is the back end of the uh, Melvins, or not Melvins, the uh, Ingleside Inn. Okay. And so this is the end of this new development here. And then they have these lots here so i'm sure they'll build another development down here of something but we're getting even closer because the light right there if you can see the green light that's palm canyon drive so 
and look at it. You can see the humidity in the air. You yes. see the clouds and just the, the haziness. So like, you know, look how sweaty you're as sweaty as me or yeah absolutely if it's if it's above 50 i get a little bit uh hot yeah 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 me too well not 50 i mean you know like i was saying earlier it's like uh, 120 i'm fine with as long as there's no humidity i'm perfectly fine i don't even break a sweat hardly oh wow but as soon as the humidity comes man 50 degrees if it's humid just like I, i'm dying you know it's just my body is just not used to humidity i've always hated it we've uh traditionally not been here in the summertime yeah uh, and it's based off of whenever my boss wants to come here yeah but uh this so this is literally my first time being here <laughs> in the summer in the, and i i really enjoy it so far yeah <laughs> it's there's, i'm not well, running into a lot of people on the trail yeah yeah uh, it's, there's no it's reservations are needed yeah. at the restaurant yep, it's a if, lot less busy it's still busy if you know. the restaurant is still open I've, yeah we've ran into oh, some, you have? Of some, of close? some of our favorites are reduced hours and whatnot oh. so well when i was a kid back in the 1960s here the whole town just shut down in the summer it was just closed for the summer and I mean, maybe there was a grocery store open or something maybe a restaurant or two wow. but i mean it was just shut and so we loved it because as kids we just had the whole town to ourselves it was fun ride your bikes and <laughs> yeah just go explore everywhere walk just walk and... ride bicycles just everything i mean it was really i loved it when nobody was here but now uh, i've heard because you might even well if you were here like at fourth of july it's packed here the 4th of July okay. now. And it's like, I've heard that Europeans have discovered it and they love, they love it here in the heat when it's 120, they love it yep, for some my, reason. In my, cause I was, I, I used to live in Germany. And uh, so when I talked to the, the locals, the German folks there, they're, they cause they have nothing else like it. They are very uh, infatuated by the Southwest of the U.S. Oh yeah, so yeah, it's Arizona, very different. Arizona, California, any any of the desert regions, yeah. uh, and so that doesn't surprise yeah, me. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. It's so different. It's yeah, it's just so different than most of the rest. And they probably have a lot of humidity over there, so they're probably not. They probably don't mind the humid, uh, you know, August or even late July. Oh, correct. I mean, we used to never have it. I don't remember any humidity at all when I was a kid at all. But then it seems like in the last 20 years that we've lived here, it seems like every year it gets a little bit more humid. So I don't know where that's coming from, but I don't like it. <laughs> it's, 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 it's the trend. The yeah, trend of, yeah you know, I guess just global warming has changed temperatures everywhere. Yeah, when you look at the temperatures all over the world now, man, they're just getting skyrocketing everywhere. Well, you know, we had our, we, we broke our temperature here. This oh, absolutely, couple, I was going to say. What was the last week, 124? I assume... If you went back to when you were coming here as a kid, yeah. probably a extreme high temperature would probably be in the 115. Yeah, probably. Like, as of the extreme. Yeah, and yeah. And now it just... Well, you know, it is funny, though, because I did, when they were looking at that, when they were saying that it was 124 is the record, 123, there was one day, I think, in the 1950s, there was 123. Okay. Something like that. Mm -hmm. But they've only had one or two. Well, now it's probably every year we're going to get 124, 125. Yeah, this is, every year it'll probably go up a, a degree or so. And this is, that, that 124 is what death is reserved only for Death Valley. Yeah. 10 yeah. or 15. Yeah, years yeah. Now yeah. it's going to. And we'd only gone to 123 maybe once or twice. Maybe, I think, maybe three times since, you know, in history. Wow. So, yeah, it, it definitely has changed a lot. All right, so let's look at the uh, the front of, of Ingleside Inn and Melvin's. And so now without the lights on, you know, do you want to walk? I think uh, we could try if you want to see. Yeah, I'm good. But, uh, All right, now let's just go take a look. So you can, you can stay here, but you can also... Uh, good morning. Good morning. Uh, you can also just come and eat here. Yeah, yeah, they have a restaurant. You'd have to check and see. Now, they might be one of the restaurants that close in summer. You know, okay, I don't know. Yeah. Well, we'll go and look. I think they'll probably have their hours on the uh, on the uh, the door. Now, I forget which famous was it. I think Sinatra, this might have been where he had his re wedding reception. And so, yeah, Sinatra, this used to be one of his favorite hangouts. And let's see here. I mean, he had a few favorite hangouts in Palm Springs, but this was definitely one of them. And let's just see what this says here. I shared this on my other channel, but I never shared it on this channel. So for those of you who haven't seen this or aren't familiar with it, just pause the video and you can read this, this plaque here. So it was built in 1922. All right, so there's a pool over here. Let's go take a look at the pool. I mean, it's still pretty early. I, I didn't even check my... Yeah, it's not, it's not even, it's, it's right after not, 7 o'clock. Oh, it's 7, 7 o'clock. Okay, so it's 7 a.m. And do you want to go in and just take a yeah. look at the lobby? If it's, yeah, should we, 
Should definitely be a lot cooler. Ooh, watch your stuff there. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Here's some coffee. Huh? There is coffee right up there on the menu. Oh, thank thanks. you very much. You're welcome. Yeah, so Lily Ponds used to. Stay here. It will be at 8 o'clock. Okay, and they do breakfast, lunch, and dinner? No, 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 no just breakfast. breakfast. Okay. Lunch. All right. So it's really just what we're staying. Yeah, okay, yeah. so it's not, not open to the public. Right. Uh, Right, right. Is it during the rest of the year? Is it open to the public during the um, season? This summer, it's going to be uh, um, it's going to be closed for a while because they're doing some remodeling oh. in the kitchen. Oh, okay. So, but right now we have uh, breakfast just for the guests. Oh, okay. And lunch. Okay. Places that have the, we try to sit outside when we eat at places, and as long as they've had the misters, it's that helps. It's, uh, yeah, feel, yeah, it's felt <laughs> very comfortable actually. Yeah, now, this time of year though, like, yeah, we definitely stay inside when we go go out to eat. Yeah, yeah watch your step. I mean, this looks nice, but yeah, it's just too muggy, too humid right now. Now, once you go in the pool, it feels great. So every day after I walk, even when it's humid like this. I go home and I jump in the pool and within just a few minutes, I'm feeling fantastic again. You're just so revitalized. And well, you probably do that at your place, right? Absolutely. You go in and jump. Well, I think that, um, let's go up here and just see if they have a... Uh, I used to live in Key West. Yeah. And so I thought I used the ocean as the gauge there. Yeah. It, it, once you get to 90 degree water, you can kind of just walk into it and people yeah. kind of classify that as bath water. Yeah. It feel it, the pool feels like yeah that. it is nice to get in but yeah it's it's perfect Jim likes it when it's 90 he loves it once it's 90 that's his favorite but so Melvin he was a, a friend of uh, Frank Sinatra and he's buried out at the uh, the cemetery the same yeah. the same uh, cemetery uh, uh, yeah in fact okay. I did a video on my other channel showing Frank Sinatra's grave and then showing his grave which is about maybe three four yards away oh so wow they're, they're so really pretty close to each other friends. yeah yeah they were very close <clears throat> yeah so here's the restaurants I guess yeah for the summer it's closed and then they're doing renovations and stuff but but I guess you can still have breakfast if you live here I mean if you are staying here so that's a nice little uh, fountain over there and is, is that uh Cemetery, the same one. It also has the veteran LGBTQ. Yeah, memorial. yeah, okay. yeah. I want, I want to get out there. Oh, oh yeah. If you guys haven't been, yeah, definitely go. And it's really nice. It's a really nice cemetery. Yeah. Uh, Suzanne Summers is buried there, but she still doesn't have her um, headstone yet. Wow, that's going on a uh, year. Well, it's been on nine months, maybe ten months. So I'm assuming since her husband was Jewish, and maybe she converted. And maybe she was Jewish. I don't know, but. Sometimes they wait a year before they place the headstone. Okay. Uh -huh. And so I think that's what's happening. Or maybe she'll never have a headstone. Some people just don't want headstones. You know, so I guess we'll find out. If after a year she still doesn't have a headstone, it's probably they just don't want one. You know, which that would be sad, but yeah, that would. Yeah. But aren't these cute, these little cottage, uh, those little cottages here? Yeah, so 1922. Yeah, this is a very, very uh, Historic, a very famous, uh, famous hotel. Yeah, so hopefully when you come back in the winter, you can uh, eat there. I've never eaten there. I, yeah, I would be, like uh, to eat there one of these be, days. Uh, awesome. And I'm probably going to have to get rid of most of the background because we were talking about politics the whole time. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I, which I hate to even bring up. I know, I do too, but it was interesting. Yeah, it was a fun conversation. And I mean, I guess if you could call it fun, but it was interesting if you could, if you could call any political conversation fun these days. Jimmy Jimmy Buffett wrote a song back in 2009 yeah. called There's a Lot to Drink About. Oh yeah. And uh, every <laughs> single word is still applicable. Yeah. So, so now, what, what did you just ask me a second ago? Oh, so um, when you started your channel was the original effort was it to be a, a car. Car, part time stream <laughs> of income or was it for fun to re just kind of record your adventures and and share your anecdotes? What, what was the motivation for your channel? Oh, well, that's an excellent question. So I parked down here. I don't okay. know where you're parked. No, or or did you, you just yeah, walk? Yeah. Okay, isn't that nice? He lives down here in uh, downtown Palm Springs and can just walk around downtown without. I had to drive here a couple of miles from where we live. But <laughs> well, that's awesome. I'm very envious. That was, uh, I would love, if we lived anywhere else, I would want to live here in downtown Palm Springs. 
But yeah, no, as far as your question goes, I, um, gosh, it was so long ago. I started my channel as a hobby. It, I, it was my graveyard channel. Have you ever seen my graveyard channel? I have. I have. Yeah, so I started that about seven, was it seven years or eight? Either seven or eight years ago. And I didn't even know you could make money on YouTube. I had no idea. In fact, I never even watched YouTube. The only thing I'd ever done on YouTube was I would go to find old songs from like when I was 50s, 60s, when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. And I would just listen to the songs on YouTube. I, cause I, I don't think the Spotify was even around back then. And so there wasn't really a lot of places where you could go to find old music. And so I would go and listen. YouTube has every old song you can ever imagine. You just search for it and you can find it. So I found the most obscure songs from, you know, the 40s, 50s, 60s. Oh, wow. Yep. That's how I found YouTube. And then I just maybe I happened to notice that a few people were doing like vlogs where they would just share their, their personal life and stuff. So I started, I thought, well, you know, now that I'm old and you know, I'm still working, but I'm going to retire at some point. That might be kind of a fun hobby, just to kind of go around and go to go visit some of the places where I grew up and some of the things that uh, sort of like trips down memory lane. Uh -huh. And so that's how my channel started. Oh, it was wow. a trips down memory lane channel. But then when I ever I would go to like a cemetery to visit somebody, you know, to remember from the past, you know, you know all the nostalgia and everything, I would visit the gravesite. All of a sudden, so. My other videos, you know, maybe I'd get 100, 200 views, but I would go to a gravesite, all of a sudden I'd get like thousands of views. I was like, wow, people really like gravesites. I had no idea because I had never really, I mean, I had all, I've always visited gravesites since yep. I was a kid, and I've done videos about that, but I didn't know anybody else was interested in gravesites, you know, and so that's how it started, just as a hobby. I figured once I retired, I wanted to have a hobby, and I thought, I've always loved taking photos. Yeah, but then once iPhones came along and you could do a video instead of a photo or an addition, I thought videos are even more fun than photos. It's so you know, easy with all the technology. It's so easy. You got it right in your pocket. You pull it out. You can take a picture if you want, but it's so much nicer to do a video where you're actually talking and walking. And, you know, I'm so glad that I at least was able to get some videos of my mom before she died. You know, so, you know, now I can watch those videos and listen to her laugh and listen to her talk and walking around so much more than you get in a photo. You know, so that's why I don't understand. I think every single person on the planet should have a YouTube channel. Just for, if it's just, even if it's just for your own personal trip, trip down memory lane, just your family. I looked at it when I started as sort of like a, a photo album, but just a video album, you know, and it's free. It's really easy. It doesn't cost anything. You got your phone right in your pocket. So anyway, that's a very long answer to your very short question. But I, I tend no, to be, it's as you know, I, I don't give short answers to anything. <laughs> so we appreciate that, though. Yeah. I mean, it's just it's all. Well, for those of you who like long videos, I guess. So anyway, so I guess I'm I'm at my car here. So I'm going to say goodbye and I'm going to go jump in the pool because I'm still really hot. I'm sure you are too. Yep, yep, so absolutely. So thanks for saying hi and so glad we bumped into each other here on this walk. And, and so nice to finally meet you, Alan. And thanks for all the wonderful comments you've left. Yeah, you? it's been a, a great uh, venture for what you share for the local area and all the interesting anecdotes that you add into it. And then all of life's unpredictable changes yeah, and stuff like that. that just pop up just along pop the way. Up. They're, they're all, yeah, that makes, all it, that makes it fun. It makes it more fun. So at least I think my car is around here somewhere. But yeah. So wait, I see your lips are getting very dry, yeah, so you better go are. home and get some water real fast. Mm -hmm. You better. Did you bring any water with you? No, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm You're only, just a few blocks uh, away. Uh, it's about 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Ish. All right, good. All right, well, thanks, Alan, and thanks all of you for watching, and we'll see you all next time. Take care. Bye-bye.